Hey, welcome to another week of the Reformed and Charismatic Podcast. Um, this is Aaron Running, your host, and we're going to have another guest on. Um, I'm going to bring him in here. This is Jot Maxi, all the way from Paris, France, right? I'm down south, south of France. It's Toulouse, France. But yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm uh, from London, living in France. All right, right on. Well, thanks for coming on, man. I, I think just to get started, maybe let's uh, hear a little bit about yourself. Um, you said already you're in France. Um, are you from there? Um, or no, you said you're from London. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know many French people with an accent like mine, so. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, my name is Jot. It's my real name. My mom gave me a crazy name. She named me after my great granddad's uh, nickname. So that's fun. Um, Maxie's my real second name as well. She got that off the side of the truck when she was crossing the road to name me. She was, uh, she was super fun. I lost my mom 10 years ago, but, um, yeah, basically I'm not, I wouldn't be a public figure at all if I could help it, but I've been doing music for a long time. And, uh, I guess most notably I joined a band, a rap metal band called Hacktivist, um, in 2017. And I was with them for seven years, seven and a half. I just left less than a year ago. I left that band. And um, um, shortly before that, in 2020, I found Christ out of, um, or he found me, however you want to say it, out of, uh, I grew up Mormon LDS. So in the back of my head, I was always going to go back to that church one day. And it turned out that, um in going back to that church i realized it wasn't wasn't the truth and uh so after finding christ in 2020 i almost quit music because i was a very i was a front man of a rap metal band and i was doing i was drinking a lot i'd been drinking almost every day for about like 10 or 10 or more years actually and um a lot of drugs a lot of ego um so when suddenly my heart's been like softened in 2020 and we're in the middle of COVID, so I'm not touring current at that, at that moment either. Um, I didn't know if I wanted to take the stage again. I was like, okay, that, that ego fueled alcoholic person. I don't want to be that person again. I couldn't be that person again. I don't think if I tried, you know, um, maybe for a, for a few hours, but I'm always heavily convicted. Like, wow can never go back there again so i almost quit music i prayed about it i was like i will i actually it's a funny funny prayer i said i will be the the cleaner in the library with the most dustiest books in the furthest corner of your kingdom god like just i'm just happy to be a part of the truth i'm happy to know that i'm coming home to god i will do you know i'll give up all this kind of self-importance and ego and like front man and music and like within that week my lyrics suddenly just started to be like gospel centric and quite like pointing to god um i was like oh wow i just couldn't stop writing um lyrics about the new the new heart in fact i'm currently writing an album called uh core novum which is new heart in latin and uh yeah it's real fun so it's not like rap metal anymore i don't know what it is it's electronic experimental rap pop christian dark wave synth 80s so there's a lot of stuff in there and it's just really fun to experiment with sounds and write lyrics that um come from a place of it's not like worship like worship music like you'd find in in church it's glorifying god through i was thinking about this today i guess it's a lot of victory and lament so i talk a lot about the challenges and like why and like ah, and the the, tr the troubles and then victory moments of just like wow actually i just released a song today called who can stand and it's about um it comes from the scripture romans 8 like if God's with me, who can stand against me? 
and it's just a big like um banging chorus like who can stand against me threats empty whatever so yeah that's me um kind of vocalist lyricist um musician glorifying god uh life change got a new heart and i'm writing about it making an album about it since since 2020 praise god man and so are you doing like all the uh, producing yourself like because i I, when I looked up uh, Hacktivist, um, I, I think you guys were part of a record label, right? Like Rise Records, which was um, like a record label that I remember listening to some bands back in the day that they were on. Yeah, man. So when I joined the band, they were like um, signed to a major, Rise Records in, in Australia. The band's from London, where I come from, um, uh, just outside London. But the, the label was in Australia and they were like, You've got two months to learn our 12 songs that we're touring. And um, they were already pretty well known, pretty big, big deal in, in the in the niche, in the rap metal world. Um, and yeah, so I used to produce to answer your question. I used to make the music. And now, honestly, there's so many people who do that well. That's their like calling that... Um, I leave that up to them. So I'll restructure and I'll add little bits to the the instrumentals I get sent. But no, I um, thankfully I have a little team of people who make really good music that I that I add the vocals to. Right on, cool man. Yeah, I was checking out some of your stuff, um, like that you post on your Instagram and whatnot, and pretty cool, man. I, I mean, the lyrics for sure, you know. And so this is like your your first album since becoming a Christian. You said right yeah okay i didn't really do any i didn't really do any solo stuff while i was with the band because it felt they didn't make me agree not to but it felt like if we were doing music we should be doing it for the for the group um so yeah this will be kind of like i'm working on a little ep which is like um drill drill rap gospel drill I found out gospel drill existed in 2021. It changed my life. I was like, wow. Um, yeah, because I love the drill beats, but I just thought all the lyrics and the kind of the the world that they, they rap about was just very just horrible. And when I saw gospel drill, like these ex-gangsters or um, or just guys that want to do the, the music in the culture, but for, for, for God instead, I was like, wow. So I'm, I was inspired to do an EP, um, tracks from five times gravity, 10 times, 20 times. I think I'll do a 50 and a hundred times gravity. And, um, the, the covers are like the, the little capsule, you know, from Dragon Ball Z where they train in, in uh, high gravity. Yeah. I used to watch Dragon Ball Z. Well, Z yeah, yeah, man. <laughs> I like the idea yeah. of like that kind of, and that's how it felt when I, the more I, was opening up to God on like the first couple of years and still now, you know, it's still the first few years of my walk, Christian, like my life in Christ just feels like the more you feel like you're, you're getting to know him, the more responsibility, the more of yourself you have to like kill <laughs> the, the harder it gets. So I was like, wow, it's never going to be, um, there are moments of freedom and moments of joy and like clarity, but it, he's always making sure this life, this mortal life is a, is a real lesson. So it's just kind of like, I like the Dragon Ball thing with the, the gravity. And then I might call the, um, I know Dragon Ball is like full of mad pagan stuff, but I like the way that whenever he really has to defeat proper mad enemy, he does the spirit bomb yeah. and everyone holds, holds out their hands kind of like when we're praying for someone right yeah and it's uh i like i like to think that it's it's not you know it's not our power it's after all it's really god's power that that overcomes so that's a little ep and then there's the album which is core novum and i'm working on them both side by side so okay five times and ten times gravity is out already and 20 will be out real soon right on and, and, mm. and just for like the audience sake, because I know we have a lot more people in the states here, 
But uh, what is drill exactly? Because I remember I asked my brother about it the other day because I saw it on your profile. And he's like, I think it's just it's like a London style rap, but more like the gangster rap. Like, This is mad interesting. The people like there's a lot of people who might have their own concept or disagree with me. But uh, from, from what I understand, it actually came, came, came out of Chicago. It actually came out of Chicago with uh, artists like, I mean, I don't need to say names. Um, a bunch of years ago, just a few years before 2020, like around 2014, Drill was like a violent rap that came out of Chicago, made its way to New York. And uh, in the UK at the time, we were doing Grime, which is like Skepta and Dizzy Rascal and all these London artists that we have. And... Uh, yeah, the way I kind of see drill, the instrumentals, it's like, for me, it comes from grime from the London side. It's like a similar tempo, upbeat with a lot of bass and synth. Um, but yeah, with dubs, with like a dubstep influence. But then in the US, I think it's different. It's got that kind of real gritty um, street. Yeah. And uh, I thought grime was going to go worldwide, man. The London grime genre, I thought that was just going to blow up all over the world. But what actually happened is drill kind of went worldwide. So there's UK drill, there's like all European drill. I mean, I'm in France, so I hear like French drill, Italian. Yeah, they're doing it all over the place. And uh, gospel drill. So I get to keep that kind of, it's an evolution of grime that I grew up listening to and rapping to i get to keep that kind of element and uh and like i want to say like it's not it's not it is violent and i talk about spiritual warfare right so it's battle music um but it's not violent because that just sounds sounds bad yeah it's battle music it's uh marching music yeah 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 hey yeah so uh you know there's there's a place for that you know like i'm a the reason why like we got connected was through victor borba you know from the the metal band reformed and i love metal and people would say that's like pretty aggressive too you know but you read some of the scripture man and it's it's pretty uh some of it's pretty gnarly you know like the way god describes you know some of the warfare or like some of the people's sins you know like it's very aggressive um language you know yeah so yeah straight up yeah um yeah i mean a lot of people have a problem with the violence in the bible They're like you know why did god allow that and all this but if you really analyze it and if you think about the context of back in those days there were like full nations of just pure evil um a cannibal just vile like tribes and stuff and when it was time to wipe them out to protect the, the good people, that's just what they had to do. So, mm. yeah. Um, I mean, I would never put that in the lyrics, like attacking anyone in the flesh. It's all very spiritual warfare. Yeah. Absolutely. But yeah, even that the battle is all a part of, it's a part of the walk. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, cool, man. Um, so, I just want to like go back a little bit on your story. So you said you were in London and then you came from the LDS church. Like were you raised in the LDS church as a kid? And then. Uh, yeah, the, the Mormon, I mean, you're not supposed to say Mormon anymore. Right. But six years ago it was there. Their whole advertising scheme was I'm a Mormon. So it doesn't really make any sense. Um, I'm going to say Mormon cause that's what most people know it as. Um, not wanting to offend anyone, of course. Uh, the Mormon missionaries walked around the corner when I was three years old. And um, the way my mom tells the story, she was taken out the trash and they walk around the corner and they were like, hi. She was like, whoa, who are these? You know, what is this? And she was converted. Um, so, yeah, thankfully it was just... Uh, my mom and I, who were LDS, I didn't have like a whole big family network. I can, 
I mean, I know a lot of people in the States when they try and leave the LDS church or when they think about it or when they do, they have a lot of family that it creates a lot of waves. Um, my mom had already passed when it came time that I realized it was uh, a false gospel. So it was it was hard enough for me to to separate the truth that is mixed in with that. And, um, you know, they use the Bible, but they just say it's not accurately translated. So to separate what was true and what wasn't took me two years, took me 2018, 19 and 20, over two years to kind of really separate the wheat from the tares, so to speak. Um, so yeah, man, basically another thing I'm thankful for is I was kind of, sounds crazy to say I'm thankful for being a, um, a little bit of a, a rebel, but thankfully I wasn't that active in the, the Mormon church. I mean, I think I'd be a lot more, I'd hold a lot more damage and contempt if I'd have gone on a, a mission, you know, they go on the two year mission young men, especially between the age of 19 and uh, 25 or six. I think if I, I always intended to, but by the time I came to that age, I was, um, I was already drinking. I was already rapping. I was already doing shows and on my own in, in clubs before I was even old enough to enter, get in the clubs. I was rapping, um, MC and we say, you know, MC into drum and bass, more, more EDM, more electronic music. I never really said I was a rapper really. I was rapping, but I would I would have said I was an MC. And yeah, to the Mormon thing, um, I always planned that one day I would go back. One day the plan was I'll go back, and it's a works based gospel, right? So you have to, you know, you have to keep all the commandments. You have to go to the temple. You have to do work. You have to baptize people who have died, and there are many many things you have to do to be. And I was going to say it to be, but you're never, ever sure of um, salvation. You're just always working for it, hoping that you've done enough. Um, you know, many people will know this, for, but for those that don't, of course, they add to the, the scripture uh, that we're saved by works alone. They'll say we're saved, uh, sorry, saved by grace alone. They'll say saved by grace alone after all that you can do. So they add to that. Um in the Book of Mormon, they've literally taken that scripture and added to it. So I guess that's why I was thinking one day I'll go back. It's because I was like, you know, teenager, I was living, my lifestyle was kind of crazy. And I just thought, how am I meant to do all that stuff? You know, how, how am I meant to do that? I'm going to have to wait until, you know, I've calmed down a little bit. It's the, the logic that it for that fake gospel, false gospel, forced me to, to adapt, uh, adopt. So, yeah, long story short, man, when it finally came time, I tried to go back when I lost my mom because they believe that to see your family again, you have to go to the temple and seal yourself to them, like get attached to them through a ritual. So when I lost my mother in 2012, I was like, okay, um, to see her again, I've got to go back to the LDS church. I've got to do this. And they weren't very welcoming. And I had alcohol issues and it was, you know, the grief of having just lost my mum tragically. Um, I wasn't really able to get to get with it at that point. So I tried again to go back in 2018. And that's when I saw th the holes. And that's when during during that time, looking online is when I started to see ministries, Christian ministries, witnessing to Mormons. I was like, hold on, but we are Christian. And that's when it all started to fall apart. And I started to. To, to differentiate so yeah i would have considered myself inactive lds mormon uh up, right up until 2019 2020 when i was finally it's august 2020 actually the same month that victor boba um came to christ same for me that's how we met actually how we got in touch um when he heard my story, he messaged me saying he had a similar one and we, we have a lot in common, which is cool. August 2020 is when I was finally able to say like, yeah, this isn't the Book of Mormon. The Mormon uh, gospel is not the, it's not true. 
so yeah and mm -hmm. i would hold the bible and say this is you know this is this is the true christ yeah and so it, it was like just a matter of like you said uh looking up online about christian ministries ministering to mormons and then from there it was just like a, a moment of just like maybe i'm not in the right right church or maybe i'm not seeking the right god um yes that was that was a lot of it online helped me out a lot and uh especially as covid hit while i was kind of mid midway through that journey so i just had the internet that's all i had well i'll be honest actually going to the church i saw a few holes in in things that were going on i'll just tell you one so i'm, I'm in the I'm in the Mormon church here in the south of France. A lot of the missionaries are from the States or other parts of the world, so I could speak English with them. I speak French, but I was obviously first language is better. So I'm I'm hanging out with them and we're watching the they have a general conference, right? Which is like um uh once or twice a year there's a broadcast, satellite broadcast where all the, the leaders will speak. And I'm watching their their prophet, because they believe that there's a prophet on earth still necessary. Their, their prophet had died and a new one comes on board. A new one is, um, you know, can't remember how they how it works. It's not elected. He's, uh, yeah, uh, appointed. And he was talking about how his wife had died and how he uh, now has a new wife who he went to the Mormon temple to get sealed to. And something... I mean, I know it now to be the spirit, but back then I didn't know what was happening to me. Just this voice was like, hold on. That means that when he goes to the afterlife, when he's with in God's kingdom, uh, he's going to have more than one wife up there because he's been sealed to two women. Instantly, something just rang out saying, get out of there. Just stand up and walk out. So I turned to the the missionary next to me and I was like, man, how does that work? Does that, he was a little awkward. He was like, yeah, I think uh, men can get remarried and resealed, but women can't. And again, his answer was even worse. I was like, what? That's not fair. So I just kind of, that was one of many actual things um, in person that was just like, hold on. If this is God's real church on earth, then why does it seem so wrong it's like, yeah and then the internet did the rest for me you know i just i researched and researched after 26 years so from the age of three to like 29 i'm believing in this i would i did not want to walk into another um deception that's why i was researching and praying and being very careful that um what was what i was now learning and the prayer that i now had and the gospel I was entering into because it felt like, you know, I studied everything, like, really. I won't go into it, but in a nutshell, I did all of it, man. I looked into Buddhism, um, all of the different things, Islam. I studied, like, the history of religion. There's a few um, online courses that will bring you up to date with the whole history of religion. And... In the end, it just kept hearing in my mind, read the Bible. You think you know what the Bible says, but you don't. So, yeah, I didn't want to be deceived again. I was making very, very sure that um, even the church I go to now, I took the, the pastor aside and I asked him all the questions. I was like, where does the money go? You know, where does it come from? Who, like, you know, what denomination? What's the weird stuff? Who's behind the curtain? He was really patient with me and reassured me on on everything. And I'm still at that church now. I'm actually um, training to be an elder at our, at our, our local church, which is super fun. And I'm um, one of the youth leaders with a new a new youth ministry. So it's really, really cool. Dude, that's awesome, man. Yeah. yeah. yeah okay. So did did this did, did all of this like take place in London, this like conversion? And then how did you like end up in France? Like, Sorry. So, yeah. Honestly, I was born in London and my mom just moved me all over. I don't know how she did it because she never really had um, the same job. She was just job to job, looking after me. Uh, just knew a lot of people. 
and would just when someone lived in a different country or whatever she just fly us out there for a for a long holiday we'd stay with them a few months so i have memories of growing up in like dubai and uh cyprus and um so no i actually left the uk shortly after my mom passed in i grew up in ireland as well i spent a long time like 10 years in ireland um our family's irish you know my family name is mcnamee my full name is Jot Maxi McNamee. Um, so from Ireland to the to France, then back to the UK because my mom was sick. And then when she passed, I came back to France. And that was in 2015. So by the time I was looking to get back into the Mormon church and all the stuff I just told you about happened, I was already here in France. So that's what I was saying. Um, the missionaries come from the States or other places where I could speak English with them because it was actually here in in the south of France that all this happened where I gotcha. Okay. Where I, right on. Right, right on. Right. Yeah, man. And so um I think like a big um I, I think a lot of the like the like quitting the band. Um because you said that's like one of the things that you're most known for. But so like breaking it to the fans like, hey, I'm actually a Christian now, so you know I'm gonna be quitting the band, right? Like Yeah. It's mad because I knew I should leave the band. I knew for a year or so, maybe more, and uh, I just didn't want to. I didn't want to let go. The big shows, um, just that rush. I I do love. I do love the, um, the performance side of music, and and also when we wrote songs and released them, I knew that there was a, the the next day after it went out, it was gonna be heard. You know. I knew I was writing songs for people to hear. I didn't know I liked that until it happened. Until I had that, I was like, I like this, you know. Um, and I'll admit, man, uh, I didn't want to let go of that. I'd, I'd, I became used to it. And when it finally, you know, I, I kind of had this feeling so long, I think it became obvious to the others. In the end, they just phoned me up. They were like, look, do you, wanna, do you just want to leave? I was like, yeah. At first, I was like, no, no. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think I need to. Um, were, were they willing to, like, accept you and keep you in the band even with your new conversion and, like, beliefs? Yeah. So, like, uh, they knew straight up. I think they always knew that I had beliefs anyway because, you know, with the I never hid that I believed there was a God or whatever. And I always did know. You know, I... Even even though it was the LDS church, I'd seen a lot of spiritual things happen. I had a I had witness of those things, and that's a whole other subject where they come from when you're in a gospel that's not. Um, but I had seen spiritual things occur, and uh, they knew that. And then after between 2020 and 2020, when did I leave? 23. So I stayed for two and a half, just over two years, and. Uh, they were cool with that. Everything was everything was all right, apart from like on the tour bus when the jokes would get dirty or whatever. You know, I kind of just sit there with my earphones in and I'd be like, "Oh man, I hope they don't think I'm being rude. I just can't. I just felt different, you know." So um, they all everything was cool. In fact, the statement I wrote about why I left it was about like six maybe little paragraphs long and only three lines was about um my faith only three lines was about christianity um and obviously that's what everyone picked up on everyone was like oh it's because he found god ah, la, 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 la. whether or not they were supportive or not of that metal fans can be quite harsh to be honest um and they're not so loyal you know, they, if they don't like a song or they don't like something, they'll they'll say it. They're brutal. Um, so whether or not they were supportive of that, the Christianity thing is what it, what they picked up on. And a few days after the announcement went out, I got a bunch of Google alerts. I woke up and checked uh, my mails. There was like seven articles on different websites on all the headlines I posted on Instagram because I, I still find it find it glorious, actually. I didn't expect that 
and all of the articles, the headline is just because he found Christianity because of his faith. I was like, wow. I think maybe they thought they were having a dig at me, but it was actually just like, whoa. It really felt like God was saying, there you go. It's a crude comparison, but like, you know how a, a homosexual will talk about coming out as gay? I just felt like, whoa, like, that's it now. Like, I make music for God now, whether I wanted everyone to, you know, I, I, I kept it to three lines of the statement, but boom, God was like, no, nope, it's going to be the headline. That's it. That's don't try and don't try and dodge the reason it's you're doing this for me now. That's what I got from that. So when I saw all these headlines, I just laughed with joy. I was like, wow, that's mad. I expected, I think I expected to leave the band and just drop off. So it was funny that within a week, there were all these headlines. I was like, hold on, I left the band. Why am I? Yeah. I've dropped off now, though. <laughs> like, <laughs> um, yeah, it's very humbling because um, I think, so. for example, Spotify, they've got like somewhere around 50,000 monthly listeners. When they release a new song, it can jet up to 150. And I have 150,000. I'll be I'll be happy if I get 150 full stop with with my solo stuff. So it's very humbling. But it's also like the best I've ever felt about music because I listen to the songs and I love them. For the first time in doing music for 15 years, I'm listening to these songs and I like them. Like I love it. I think that's that's what's important. And I know that it doesn't go against. Um, there's nothing wrong in the lyrics. There's nothing. In fact, it points towards God rather than go against him. And that, that's even better. It's like, I like it. God probably, hopefully likes it, you know, it's yeah. telling people about him. So, so you have yeah, more man. of like a clear conscience on it now. Yeah. I never thought about it like that, but yeah, it went from doing very dark, lost, angry, egotistical music before the band to then doing very like worldly um angry and sort of what i thought people might want to hear if i'm honest with the band and also compromising with the other guys in the band and trying to stay true to the style that they had before i joined and then now it's just like just me truth not just my truth the truth of why we're on this planet and yeah so it's super clean <laughs> and yeah. and so and then when you you're at this church now and how did you start getting like you said you kind of like you know pulled the pastor aside and kind of you know asking him a lot of questions and stuff how did you end up getting involved with like the youth group and now like on track to like be trained to be an elder um so yeah, a lot happened. I got kind of baptized, married, um, all in the same. Now I've been with my my now wife for seven years, so she's been with me through the journey. She actually came to the Mormon church with me to, to check it out. Um, miracle story that through another path, um, through some bad experiences she had with some friends of hers, she came to Christ at the same time as me, but through a, through a whole nother journey. And he, he like brought us to him at the same time. We lived together in the same room. Um, but I like our walks towards God would like through completely different ways. Me coming out of the LDS thing and her witnessing some dark, um, rituals and things with some satanic friends of hers and she thought wow if the dark exists like that then the light must do so we got married um baptized in the same year year before uh, year before last and then i was trying to find my place in the church you know i was like i want to do something uh i i sung with the i sung with the worship group i sung with the the band for a while in church well, not for a while, for a couple, couple, couple sessions, and it didn't. It was clear that that wasn't my, wasn't what I was gonna do. I did the sound on the on the iPad for a while, 
Um, coming out of addiction myself, I also started to do the AA and the NA and then the, when I say do, I attended and then started to help run these programs, Alcoholics Anonymous, Narcotics Anonymous. And um, then it became a Christian program, uh, Celebrate Recovery and things like that. I was trying to find my place. Um, and nothing seemed to be sticking. And then just one day, um, the lady who runs our children's ministry, she just said, you know, we've been looking to start a youth group. There's there's kids who they get too old for the, the children's group and they're looking for something to do. Um, and I was like, yeah, I always wanted to get involved with, with youth. I'm still a big kid myself, like, trust me. Um, so I signed up and I thought I would just be one of many volunteers. And in fact, there were just, there were just three of us. I was like, Oh, turns out I'm kind of running the, I'm leading this, which is really cool. Um, and then, yeah, my wife just got involved as well. So now there's four of us on the team and we we get to surf together in that. And then a few months into doing the youth group, I was just starting to get get used to it i was like this is me this is this is um this feels right found my place in church and the one of the elders who lives not far from me so i get a lift to church with them he just said um we're looking to expand the elder the elders group the eldership and your name came up i'd actually had that come to me in prayer but because i've got so used to like like I said, my ego and stuff, like killing it off. I was like, come on now. If, if, if that's me, then be quiet. And if that's from God, then I won't tell anyone, but I'll keep it there. So when he approached me and said, your name came up, I said, actually, yeah, now that you mention it, I had this, this crossed over me and I thought it might be me wanting to, you know, lead more, <laughs> but it seems like God is saying, no, um, you're not going to be that cleaner in the library in the farthest corner. You're going to lead a little bit. So, so now, um, just embarked on 22 months of studies for ministry, and uh, it's really fun. I love the stuff. I love learning about it. All of the, you know, the on a deeper level, learning about God and the way that He has laid out for us to follow. I just think. You know, leader, leader or not, everyone should be learning this stuff. It's just next level. It's brilliant. Yeah, absolutely, man. Mm. Dude, that's so awesome to hear your story. And uh, yeah, me and my wife actually help out with the youth at our church too. Um, oh, that's amazing. And, yeah, and the the young adult, which is kind of like the college age, university age, you know. So, yeah. Yeah, we help out with a little bit of that. So yeah, it's a lot of fun, man. Keeps you young too. I mean, I got three little kids to help with that too, but uh, yeah. Yeah, I saw, man. I was checking out. Your family, you guys look amazing. It's beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I appreciate you coming on. Um, I'm going to have to get going here in a little bit. But um, was there anything that you wanted to like plug or anything? I know you mentioned your music. Where can people like follow you? Man, like, um, yeah, I would have loved to, you know, we'll, we'll have to keep, keep in touch, man, because I want to hear about your story as well. You know, I, I know that what's happened in my life is special. It's really not me. It's God's authority and power and how he transforms hearts. You know, his touch has just changed me. I was a, I was a, a bitter, warped, injured, um, toxic. You know, I, I look at who I was and I just think, what? Um, so I know that it is special, but still, you know, I don't feel special. So I want to I want to hear all about you, man. So maybe we'll have another chat another time. Maybe I'll start a podcast and you'll come on. Yeah. Um, yeah, for sure. Yeah. No, basically, I'm I'm still working on this EP, this gospel drill, and then the album is electronic, experimental, dark Christian pop. <laughs> you know, it doesn't have a genre. So if if anyone wants to come and check that out. And I'm at Jock Maxi on all platforms. And uh, yeah, 
new new stuff all the time i'm trying to get into voice work as well so if anyone makes any animation or is doing any documentaries or anything they they need voiceovers for i'm i'm looking to get into that stuff too so or if anyone just wants to wants to talk or share i'm um i'm really enjoying caregiving and learning about others and the lord just keeps opening my heart and making me more and more empathetic and i'm always open to, to conversation and learning other people's paths and learning from from them it's just a yeah. pleasure to be on this on this journey absolutely yeah with the voiceover yeah. stuff um i think i actually saw somebody working on a uh kind of like an anime but like a christian one yeah not the like nephilim or something you should hit them up and be like hey let me get in on that you know yeah yeah you know if it's the same person the same one i think i saw as well uh, I already did hit him up. I was like, man, use my voice. <laughs> yeah. I think it's through uh, Angel it Studios, more. right? Yeah, there needs to be more stuff like that. Yeah. More. I mean, I'm, uh, not, more... I'm not an anime guy. I did watch Dragon Ball Z when I was younger, but uh, my brother's huge into it and my cousin too. Yeah. I don't know, anime or not, I just like all kinds of, um, you can hear that in my music as well, all kind of um, science fiction, cyberpunk kind of like, alternate dimension kind of stuff i like all that so but there should be more that follows uh the truth i don't want to say the the christian what like just the truth there should be more about like um the heavens and god and that would make for some really cool sci-fi and anime absolutely yeah yeah cool man all right i'll make sure to put your uh your links in the uh, description and all that and again i appreciate you coming on man it was, it was really cool connecting with you and we'll definitely have to like catch up and uh, I can share some of my story too. I actually have Straight a full up. episode of the podcast where I share my testimony, but I'd love to do it personally too. So, Yeah, I checked a few of the episodes, but I'll find that one, man. I'd really love to, to know about that. Right on. Cool. Well, thanks for coming on. Have a good rest of the day. Well, it's like almost end of the day for you over there, huh? Yeah, it's still, still bright though, sunny. <laughs> yeah. All right, man. God bless. All right, man. Respect. Thank you, brother.